The domestic violence murders of Hannah Clark and her three children in Queensland in 2020 caused an outpouring of grief and shock across Australia. And it also highlighted the issue of coercive control. So what is it? Coercive control is a pattern of behaviours used by abusers to establish power and control over their victims through fear and intimidation. It's not just a precursor to physical violence, but a serious and harmful form of abuse in its own right. It can take many forms, including physical violence and intimidation, sexual violence, degradation and humiliation, like threatening to expose private photographs, controlling friendships and activities, emotional abuse, including insults, manipulation and threats, financial abuse, like controlling access to money, stalking or harassment, including repeatedly calling or messaging, or spiritual abuse which can be preventing someone from religious or spiritual practice. They're behaviours that really disempower um, a person in a relationship and really uh, have them questioning their own um, reality, their sense of uh, self-worth. Um, it really undermines all they are as a person. There's increasing debate across Australia about whether coercive control should be criminalised. Tasmania is the only jurisdiction in Australia where some controlling behaviours are separate criminal offences, although it is recognised as a form of abuse in family law. The Queensland Government has promised to make coercive control a crime and is beginning consultation on draft laws. More comprehensive legislation has existed in the UK for several years. Coercive control was made a crime in England and Wales in 2015, Ireland followed in 2018 and Scotland in 2019. The learning so far, and it's only early days, is that widespread training and sustained training is necessary, not just for our first home responders like police, uh, it's actually needed for the whole community to be able to identify this kind of behaviour. Coercive control laws would require police officers to prove a pattern of abusive behaviours, additional training and resourcing for law enforcement and the legal system would be needed to understand and recognise the signs. This is one of the greatest challenges. So what we're doing at the moment is looking at various models across the world. And we've looked at one at Scotland where um, it is about co collecting the evidence efficiently and effectively as possible and presenting that to court. So it's not just behaviours, it's texts, it's telephone calls, it's emails, it might be financial records. As the issue of criminalising coercive control continues to be part of the national conversation, it's leading to greater public awareness about the behaviour. And if you or someone you know needs help, please contact 1800 RESPECT by phone or their website, or if you're experiencing distress, please contact Lifeline on 13 11 14.